This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off free shipping and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. I love Big Riley. She requested it. She never should have requested it. Welcome to Ultimate Spidercast. I am still enjoying me, as always, is... Ah, it's little hellfire, y'all. Remember this stuff. I forget what was I. Oh, there was some drop uh, last week. Charlie Esther's like, I'm surprised you didn't hit that drop. He's like, I'm not. Li-. He's like, it's like my uh, I love Ben Riley drop. <laughs> 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 That's like the one drop he associates with you now is I love Ben Riley. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a shirt that says that. Oh my god, I should make that free for Christmas or something. Oh my lord. But it's gotta have my angry face. Oh no, I was gonna say, I love Ben Riley. Just like pictures of Ben Riley as like Scarlet Spider and Spider Man. Oh god. With the mullet, with the blonde hair. That's Ultimate Spider Cast. (laughs) Welcome to. Welcome to Spidey's World. Oh, missed opportunity. I guarantee somebody already had it. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, oh no. Welcome to Parker's world. Parker, uh, Parker can't lose. (laughs) Oh, if we were two guys, we could call it the Parker Brothers podcast. One of us will turn to dust, though. I don't know who, which one is which yet, though. Oh, snap. Snap twice. I, I put on a little weight. <laughs> oh, oh, please. Yeah, she weighs a whole hundred ten pounds now. Your mama's so big. Thanos had to snap twice. <laughs> How apropos! Because in game is upon us, people. In game is upon us. Ooh. <laughs> That's right. We'll be reviewing it, and that gentleman will be joining us. Uh, but what we should be hyped for is home, uh, far from home. Far from home, yes. Coming, I believe they moved we'll, it. We'll uh, be discussing that. That's that's the that's an that's a news item. I think didn't they move that up? Because I thought I think it was later in July. And now it's like the first week of July or something. Yeah, they probably want to capitalize on that Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, or I think they, I think that. Yeah, I think that's what they're doing. They they saw how like even though because Captain Marvel is going to be really close, but people are still going to go see in game. So I figure they want to kind of keep that ball rolling. Oh yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. And I think July fourth on a Thursday, so yeah, it's going to be a long weekend for a lot of people. So yeah, so yeah, I'm really excited for it actually because you know Nick Fury's back. Or Spoilers, is it, if you haven't seen the trailers, it, Nick Fury Junior. Chameleon, or? what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! I, I'd riot. I just want you to know, I'd riot. I know. But anyway, what issues are we talking today? We are talking. What villain are we still stuck on? Electro. It's like the second week. Come on, relax. <laughs> Spider Man thirty eight, thirty nine, and forty from September, October, and November of nineteen ninety three. Oh, 93. Oh, right. I feel so old. Uh, Yeah. yeah. You were, what, seven when these came out? (laughs) The good old days when I didn't have to pay my own bills. (laughs) So many bills. Before she grew up. If you would like to be a sugar daddy for Love Hell Fire, please get a hold of us. Or sugar mama, you know, I don't discriminate. Oh, wow. (laughs) Bring on the gingers. Anyway, <laughs> Lil Hellfire is bisexual. Buy me whatever. Buy me. <laughs> I don't care who you are. Buy me whatever I want. Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, anyway, yes, this story is light the night. Because. Wait, I feel like we're in a Teen Titans Go episode now. <laughs> Nah, what grapes? No. (laughs) 
But yeah, uh, written by J.M. DeMatteis and uh, DeMathis, whatever. And Claus Jansen art, which I don't know. Sometimes Claus, I mean, because he's done, he done stuff for Marvel and DC, but I, don't know, I think the right or wrong inker can make or break Claus Jansen art. Um, yeah. It's true. Which, I mean, at least some of this story, I was just like, this is art. I don't know. Yeah. You know, sometimes people are, you know, they have a rough start. Even Pete's looking a little chunky in this. <laughs> Must be this Peter Parker fan. Living a good life. But like... <laughs> God. Ah, Max Denver. Dillon. That's all I can say. I know. It opens up with him, like, in a carnival, working in a carnival. Yeah. Like, it reminds me of that, um, you probably don't watch it, the Black Mirror episode. <laughs> I'm just like, I can't, I can't with electrocution chairs now. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's just, it's just... It's like a mock electrocution, too. It's just like, oh, this is so morbid. Well, it's probably like a, it's probably like a real electrocution, but, ele you know, with Electro's power set, it just, like, you know, he absorbs all the energy. Yeah. And then the light bulb in the mouth is always... Yeah. I mean, when are they going to make Electro a mutant already? Because, I mean, that is, like, the laziest origin, I think, in comic books. He was, like... Working on power lines when it got struck by lightning, and then all of a sudden he has electrical powers. I mean, he's he's just like Pete, you know. His his genes are mutated, but he is not a mutant. Yeah, but how does lightning and power lines a, a mutate your? I mean, at least Barry Allen had chemicals, and with that lightning bolt. How, how does toxic sludge give you bat vision? I don't know how things work in the Marvel universe. Okay, I just go with it. I get and well, these toxic waste mutate your cells instead of giving them cancer, it gave them hyper senses. Because that makes sense. More than lightning. With that, lightning gave them abs, and let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we get the uh, whole jam, the the math as usual, you know, getting into people's psyches and people feeling worthless and. <sighs> and worst of all, Charlie. Oh Buchanan. my lord! And what, is, and what is with that outfit Charlie's wearing through most of this? It's like, I mean, just like well, when we first see him in the hat and the doesn't he look like you know like the son of the burglar does <laughs> <laughs> that killed Uncle Ben? That's the vibe. Like maybe that was a secret plot twist they never got around to. <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, Spider Man's busted me many, many times, but he never remembers me. Oh, tell him you're the son of that burglar; he'll remember you. He'll probably throw you off the building too. <laughs> uh huh. But yeah, Charlie's just like Robin, Robin, a guy in a hotel room. <laughs> hmm, some funny business that went awry, eh? <laughs> George Costanza, you say, eh? <laughs> One of my favorite Seinfeld episodes ever. What? You're robbing me? Are you going to call me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just like how Electro is so like so self-satisfied in the end of the first issue. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm going to light up the night, and I'm just like, oh, God, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, and he... Oh, I love how Jameson calls Peter a high school kid. And it's just like, Jameson, are you going to see now? It's been a while since Pete's been in high school. You, I mean, they give us the reason at the end of the story why he's like constantly talking down to Peter in the story. I know. But it's just like, bro, didn't he like graduate in Amazing Spider-Man like 28? And he started the bugle in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Too, so I'm just like, we've had some time, bro. We've yeah, I think he was by the Amazing Spider-Man in was it 20s or 30s. Yeah, he was already on high school. And then also, you know, we see Charlie, uh, Charlie Buchanan in like Amazing Spider-Man three and four too. So, yeah, the issues, not the movies. Oh obviously. yeah, yeah. So there are no three and four. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And I was like, why Why did he lie about being in Vietnam? Who? Uh, who? So Charlie? Char Char Charlie? Charlie. Charlie. Well, wasn't, he, wasn't, he, wasn't he like panhandling or something? Oh, he's the Storm worst. Storm Valor. <laughs> yeah, the worst. But he's like, 
But yeah, that's the whole thing. It's like, are you supposed to feel bad for Charlie? Because he's like, oh, Spider-Man doesn't remember busting me a hundred times. Nobody respects me. It's like, well, dude, you're like a bottom feeder. You're pulling all these, like, you know, again, he's like pretending to be a Vietnam vet, like panhandling. Yeah, it's just like, that's like the lowest thing you can do. Yeah, you deserve to be forgotten. You're never going to be a top tier villain. No, that it's like, are we supposed to feel bad for this guy? Because I don't. I know. But um, issue two, uh, Sarah Klein, and I'm just like, whoa, that's somebody I haven't thought about in a while. <laughs> Who? I mean, that. It's... Yeah, the one where they, they're assessing the hotel damage or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, but you act like it's. I don't think. I think she was only in this story, right? She was. She never showed up. Yeah, there, right? only the story. That's all. Yeah. Just like I was trying to think. I feel like they mentioned her like in an Ultimate Universe somewhere. Mm-hmm. I was trying to remember. Maybe. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean that that plot that point it's just you know she's flirting with peter because uh, conveniently mary jane's out of town again because somebody didn't want to write for her <laughs> yeah that, so that that's get... the great upside of being a model though like it's plausible yeah yeah and we get aunt may calling oh no you can't take care of yourself without mary jane it's like really um peter looks stupid in a tuxedo fight me <laughs> He's not used to wearing one. He looks stupid, and we never need to put him in another <gasps> one ever. Oh, oh, but look, continuity. He's I think tr- that's what. Why- oh yeah. No, I was, was going to say continuity. He's having trouble tying his tie. Remember last episode uh, when we did spectacular Spider-Man issue? He Mary Jane had to help him tie his tie. Of course, because Uncle Ben didn't teach him how. We know. We know. We get it. <laughs> Uncle Ben's too busy being Mephisto. <gasps> Don't put that idea in. Charlie. I'm telling you, one of these days, somebody's gonna gonna hear this this podcast with me saying it. It's gonna happen. They're like Uncle Ben needs. Oh, they're like Stanley's dead. We can bring Uncle Ben back now. No, he's not gonna be supernatural. He's just gonna be like some behind the scenes villain. He's the chameleon. <laughs> oh, the chameleon, and worst of all, the chameleon. <laughs> Russian spy. <laughs> that also happens to be a robot clone. <laughs> Just put all the worst plot points into one. Uh, and then at the end of the arc, he crumbles to dust. It's fine. <laughs> Till someone brings him back 20 years later. Oh, God. But yeah. Can you imagine being busted by Spider-Man six times, though? Like, can you just imagine? And he doesn't remember <laughs> you eight any time. Uh, so, I mean, I don't get why Electro feels like a loser. I, I mean, I think he's a lo- loser, but, you know, it, there's worse people he could be. <laughs> I mean, he has superpowers. I, I mean, you know, could be stilt man. God. Yeah, Electro's not as bad as Stilt Man, but I don't know. Like I said, it that's like a this writer just loves to, you know, you know, get into the psyches of characters and a lot of times they either have like childhood issues or <laughs> feelings of inadequacy. Okay. Can we talk about how back in the day Marvel really couldn't write women? Because Sarah Klein says, I'm sorry for coming on to you. My biological clock has been and to find a man to put some babies in me, basically. <laughs> yeah. Are we are we just gonna gloss over that? Oh well, it, that was terrible. I mean, if you read the Clone Saga, I mean, Ben Riley was around for what, like, two years. You know how many girlfriends he went through in that two years? I swear, yeah, I swear it's yeah, at least true. five or six, at least. Fun. Including Betty Graham. <laughs> yes. That's the only props he gets from me. <laughs> My weekly Betty Brandt rant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Issue 2 is just kind of like loose glue. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, you know, it's, you know, more with Charlie and then we got them setting up for the party and then, you know, Electro deciding that he's going to like the night on the top of the... I mean, I know it's like the tallest building in New York, but it's like just so happens to be on the roof where they're having the party. Convenience. Gotta yeah. love it. 
very convenient. It's not like Peter even has to like web swing across the street. No, it's all up to the roof. Oh, and it. Okay, but he's he's a greedy little goblin in the last issue because he hooks himself into the electrical grid and he takes every bit of it. And I'm just like, you're so annoying. Yeah, well, I mean, at that point, it's like I don't think he, you know, he he pulls in all the power, but then it can't he can't stop it. Yeah. And then what? And then what's up with Charlie dressing like a super villain? He wants to, he wants to be that guy so bad, but he can't because he wants to rob the put all the rich people at the party, so he puts on some ridiculous costume. Crook man! Oh my. And he has, like, fake dynamite strapped to him. Or Better than real dynamite. Just like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, just some hot dogs painted black with a little electrical Whoa. tape. <laughs> but, yeah, you were right about it. They can't write. They couldn't write for women. Like, uh, the, the minute, you know, Sarah's like, oh, I'm sorry I was hitting on you, Peter, because, you know, you're a married man and everything. But, you know, the minute Charlie takes off that super villain costume. She's like, oh, you're such a great guy. Because <laughs> he picked her up off the floor. Yeah. What do you do for a living? And that um, whole, okay. I, uh, Sarah's father's thing, too, you know? Like, oh, God. Oh, Jameson was like, a, you know, <laughs> he was like a god to me. Yeah. I, want, I wanted to impress his daughter. I was like, oh, okay, creep. So weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This this is a weird little Again arc fetishes. <laughs> what? Keep your fetishes out of my comic book. <laughs> One hit on your I think I I need a t shirt that says that. <laughs> Ask me about my comic book agenda. Yes. Unless it's Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor has his shirt off. That's the only one I will allow. I was thinking about that. Whatever the male equivalent of damsel in distress is, I am here for that. I was going to say, I know your history with the Marvel. Did you ever watch the first Captain America movie? Uh, no. I was going to say, because Chris Evans, once he, you know, when he, you know, when he, they give, you know, when they give him the serum and everything, when he comes out of the thing, he's all shirtless. No, no, of course I've seen that clip on YouTube. Oh, that okay. show the waist ratio is ridiculous. Yes, I've <laughs> seen that clip. Over and over. In five minute intervals. <laughs> also, Peggy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> Lil's like, she can get it. Yes, Haley, you can get it too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Oh, but we we forgot to mention what was it in, was it in the second issue when Peter dumps the punch bowl over Jonah's head? Yeah, I was like, I mean, he deserves it, but really? But, but that's your boss, yeah. We could take yeah. no more. We I mean, that was a fantasy come to life right there. <laughs> Thirty years of pent up rage. <laughs> oh, but they'll work God. it. They work it out at the end of the last issue. Of course, as you do. And all the reporters get a, a shot of Spider-Man and Electro hugging. <laughs> I I need that. I need that as my screensaver. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, but no, but when Peter mentions it, then in the issue we'll be doing next episode, oh, Electro, don't want to hear that. Of course. Mm-hmm. Because this is like right before the Clone Saga, and the next issue we'll be doing Amazing 425 is right after the Clone Saga. Yeah, I don't like the way this ended, because it's like, I don't know, things were looking too good for Charlie. Like, he got the job at the Bugle, he's with Sarah. Exactly, and it's like, what did he do to deserve that in this story at all? I mean, the only reason he met her is because he was like, threatening a whole room of people with fake dynamite. I don't think that set a good precedent for little boys. No. <laughs> That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Yeah, seriously. Again, that's what I said. This whole storyline. I was like, were you supposed to feel bad for Charlie? Because I didn't. I thought he was just a jerk. Okay, you feel inadequate. Fine. But that don't mean you got to threaten people. Or steal. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't know. So, <laughs> like, letter grade, what did you, th- what did you think of this storyline? Um, I would give it a B minus. Mm. Um, Which is good for an Electro story. I don't know. I might have to go C plus. Just like, like I said, the art in a lot of places was like, hit me the wrong way and just, like, damn Charlie. I don't know, the punch ball, it, it's put me over the edge. There was a, there were some cute moments in it. Yeah. That kind of like edged it up to a higher grade. Electro and his uh, Uncle Fester moment. Yes. <laughs> yes. They fall in the mouth. So, there's a crap ton of new spider books, I heard. Well, there's two today that came out today, as of this recording. So, did you read the latest part of Hunted from Amazing Spider-Man 20? Of course I did. Of course. It is... I, I, I don't want to sound like a negative Nelly, but I, I think the best days of this arc are behind them. What? <laughs> I think the best days of this arc are behind us. Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it, but yeah, they probably could have tightened this up a little bit and not done as many parts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, just, it, it, it needed to tighten up. I, I mean, it's a good story. could have been even greater if they just would have tightened it up. Definitely. But, I mean, are we just, um, of course, this is just a uh, precursor to the Black Cat ongoing that's coming out in June. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm probably going to pick up the first, like, three issues. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to give it a try. So, we'll, so. Oh, we can talk it here. Of course. Spider World. Spider World. <laughs> our Marvel, our Marvel Catwoman. Literally. Mm. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, because Felicia has her heroic moment saving Billy Connors this issue. Yes. I just hope that she's written consistently and like there's a goal in mind for the character. I feel like her character development gets erased so easily and forgotten. It's like either be a cat woman and be a straight up anti anti hero or you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think they, they kind of tried to do that in the beginning of this arc because they did say, you know, she had been, like, the last couple of years, she'd been acting like a crime boss, but, you know, it's because cause her mind and everyone else's had been messed with by that stupid Mephisto mind wipe. Yeah. Yeah. Just let Aunt May die already. Let her be with Uncle Ben in heaven, damn it. Well, she has cancer right now, so it, it could be coming. And then that can undo all the wrongs. Oh, but, I mean, have you been reading Amazing Spider-Man since since issue one? Who's the guy in the bandages? <laughs> do, do you want to speculate? I don't know. It's just something just like, who could it be? It's just... <laughs> it's somebody we don't know. It's some original character. I don't think... For I poops don't know. and giggles. For poops and giggles. I don't know. Maybe as long as I can break that Mephisto deal, I don't care. <laughs> Basically, that's what everybody's hoping for at this point. Oh, yeah. That's all I see online is, like, bring back the marriage. Actually give Mary Jane something to do when you do that as well. Well, I mean, I mean, like, look what they're doing in Spider-Man City Awards, like a different continuity, but, like, make her a reporter. Or, you know, give her, yeah, give her something to do. Give her the old Iris West treatment. Or make her a reporter, give her powers, something. That's no, they... don't give her powers. Stop. Well, I mean... <laughs> Stop that, though. I know. <laughs> well, that's what they did in that, um, uh, oh, what was that? That, that uh, one where they're, where they're still, that alternate timeline where they were still married. Uh, Renew Your Vows, yeah. Yeah. She had, like, a suit that kind of tapped into Peter's powers. Uh-huh, phrasing. <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah, this, this, I don't know, this arc is kind of dragging a little bit. Just it's like, how long are we going to be stuck in this force field? Because <laughs> seriously, but, like, yeah. it feels moving from place to place, but you're, you know, just how many issues and we're stuck under this dome. And where did all these vermin come from? <laughs> 
someone's butthole. Ooh! <laughs> drop. I said butt. I know. <laughs> I know, Alice. Here's my drop. Uh, and did you read Superior Spider-Man number five? Oh, no. Sorry, Charlie. <gasps> How's it going? That's all right. We'll discuss it on uh, Super Connectivity. Um, Super Connectivity, okay. I mean, it's good. I mean, uh, our our uh, good friend Otto and his new body had a has a date. Mm, okay. And it's who's in, he trying to give it to? Uh, some professor who's working at Horizon. She's an older woman. I don't know how much, but yeah, she keeps saying how she's older than him, and he's. But then uh, things seem to be going good until she t- he tells her his that he's like, oh yeah, I'm really Otto Octavius. <laughs> really? Yeah, but then uh, yeah, so she freaks out, tries to run away until they get attacked by demons. Hmm. Because who's the villain? Master Pandemonium. Well, now they're just going all out on that book, aren't they? Oh yeah, because yeah, because. Uh, Auto figures out it's Master Pandemonium, so who does he call for help? Doctor oh Strange. That, 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 that's, that's right up Charlie's alley. They're, oh, they're yeah. checking all Charlie Esser's boxes. I'm just like, oh, that sounds terrible. I hate all of that. If <laughs> if you're on YouTube, check it. We'll, I'm sure we'll discuss this tomorrow night. Or uh, if you're on the podcast, uh, Listen to Super Connectivity episode 234, I believe. Yes, then we'll talk Superior Spider Man number five. But yeah, it's funny. Doctor Strange is just like, I don't care what kind of, what body you're in. I know it's you, Octavius. <laughs> He's like, the old uh, Thor treatment, huh? Well, Otto's like, I can change. Yeah, I used to be a supervillain. Used to be an arrogant, uh, an arrogant douche, you know? So it's, it's, Wait, that didn't change. <laughs> Like I Wait. said, that the only thing that I like about the Doctor Strange in the MCU is they got that casting dead freaking mm, on. He yes. does not have to act. He just shows up. Oh, you watched Infinity War. Now I can now, now I can make uh, references to that movie and you'll get it. I mean, all the best clips are on YouTube. It's not like I actually I had to watch the whole movie. I know. Hi, I'm Peter. I'm Doctor Strange. Oh, we're using our, our fake names. I'm Spider-Man then. Trailer bait. <laughs> it's all good. Freaking Star Lord. <sighs> yeah, yeah, you can say that again. But I've always felt that way about him. So oh, stupid. now the whole world feels that way, and I'm happy. <laughs> now he got dusted for his effort. If only things were permanent. Oh no, James Gunn's coming back to direct. <laughs> Hopefully he'll leave Suicide Squad. <laughs> Why? He's making bank if he does both. I know, but I just that's not who I want to reboot the Suicide Squad. They need something at this point. Whedon didn't work on Justice League. He will not work on Suicide Squad. Let's stop hiring Marvel people for DC stuff. Let's just stop doing that. Told you. They, they think they have to follow the Marvel method, and it's like... Too little too late. Gotta Let put Shazam in, and Aquaman and Wonder Woman be your guide and just mind your damn business. You have to admit, whether you love or hate the MCU, Lilith, uh, they 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 had a plan. They followed the plan. And they stuck to it, yeah. Marvel did not, you know, they hit a bump in the road. <coughs> Thor Dark from World. a business perspective, absolutely. I totally respect them from a creative decision. Like I said, I feel like all yeah. the movies kind of run together for the most yeah. part, unless it's the Captain America movies. Those are the ones that they kind of... yeah. And Guardians of the Galaxy that kind of deviate from that, but, but I mean, I mean, you know, they hit a bump in the road. They don't change course right away. DC. Yeah. Although there's some movies like do- the second Thor. Come on. Oh, that is the worst one. Thor: The Dark World. Yeah. Even no, the first Thor, but whatever. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I. Those are probably. Mo- those are like, pro- can we have a Hawkeye movie instead of a Thor movie? How about that? Those are probably my least two favorite as the first two Thors. Yeah. And Iron Man, uh, as much as I love Iron Man, Iron Man 3 was unnecessary. Too much suits flying around by themselves. It's It was just... Yeah. Yeah. And him out of power in the suit for a lot of times, but... Yeah, we'll have to do an overview 
eventually. You, Charlie, and I. We should do that as a special for uh, Capes one day. What, the whole MCU in one episode? Yeah. Oh, we could do that, unless we just do a rewatch of each movie. No, we're not <laughs> rewatching every single movie. We're not doing that. <gasps> we can talk about the overarching... Well, if, well, if we did one a month, that would last us for like two years. No! We are not <laughs> doing that! <laughs> Come on, Charlie would make it fun. I mean, if we, I'd be, I, I could do Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, uh, Ant-Man, Ant-Man and Wasp, uh, what else? I think that's it. <sighs> Why don't we start this before Endgame came out? Alright, we'll figure something out. Yeah, we'll do, maybe you, me, and Astro will do just one big MC, 10th ten, anniversary MCU special. Yeah, it's like, here's where we are now, and what we're looking forward to in the future. Oh yeah, because I think they said, um, Spider-Man Far From Home as, is the it's last. It's technically the end of Phase 4, or whatever? Phase Three maybe, but yeah, really? they, I think they said they're not even going to announce what's coming next until after Spider Man comes out. Yeah, I was like, um, shouldn't Endgame be the end of Phase Three or whatever phase we're in right now? That makes the most sense. Who knows? Who knows? But okay. yeah, we definitely it does merit a good hearty discussion. <laughs> okay, we'll get some friends on too. I miss our topical episodes of Capes. Oh yeah, we've you know it's been a while because we've had movie reviews and road trips and we'll get there. All right. It's all right. So since we're talking MC, are we done? Yeah, definitely. I got a little of talking MCU, you know. <laughs> all right. So like I said, join us next week for Amazing Spider-Man four twenty five oversized issue uh little's favorite ben rally isn't in it but her other favorite character is in it nate gray you see what he does to me do, do, do you see <gasps> it's why it's why i couldn't be a part of the road trip because the next time i see philip i'm gonna murder him and i don't need witnesses <laughs> i thought you were coming up this summer summer i am with no witnesses <laughs> <laughs> Don't so judge if you, me. If you hear a new executive producer on Capes, you know what happened. Don't judge me. <laughs> Get in that shirt. <laughs> I have issues. All right, so, yes. Send us your thoughts on uh, all the Electro stuff. And after we do Amazing Spider-Man 425, the week after, of course, we're doing Amazing Spider-Man 2. Probably almost as controversial as Spider-Man 3. So send all your thoughts. Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com, facebook.com, slash ultimate spidercast, at ULT spidercast, and at CL Sidekicks on Twitter, CL Sidekicks on Instagram, the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38Capes. And go check out Work in Progress from the artiste, Miss Lil Hellfire, uh, capesandlunatics.org. And Lilith, where can Whoever people... Whoever I will find you. What? You. <laughs> Whoever has capesandlunatics.com, I'm still looking for you. So, if they want to forward that to you, where can they get a hold of you? If you want to party with me on the interwebs, you can find me on Twitter, at Lilith Hellfire. And over on the gram, you can find me at Lilith Hellfire 86, because 69 was taken. I want to be a serious actor. <sighs> all right, so thank you for joining us for Ultimate Spider Cast once again. And if you are interested in the MCU, go check out Capes and Lunatics episode 102 for our big Endgame special. Us and our friends, we even got Will Hellfire to review an MCU movie. Swing on back. Whip. Whip.